Alright, uh, this is the second part of the diversion tutorial. Now I'm going to explain a little bit on how the modulation matrix works and how you can use it to create cool sounds. First layer now, we have the first oscillator activated and I think I'm going to try to make some kind of bass sound over here. So I'm going to uh, put octave down two steps. Uh, sorry, now I got the wrong synth activated. This one. Firstly, uh, I want this saw sound to sound a little less sharp, so I'm going to add an analog low pass filter to it. And uh, I will also increase the scissor effect here. Just by a little bit. And then I'll go to uh, erosion, I think. Yeah, that's kind of good. Uh, I think I want to pull this even further back, so I set an octave to minus three. And now we're going to try to create an envelope for this uh, cutoff filter here. So if we go into the modulation tab here and uh, go to the tab of that says envelope 1 and press the power on button uh, to activate it. You can begin by restoring all the knobs to zero and then you get uh, have the mo modulation matrix over here. Uh, the first little feel here is uh, which component you want to use as a uh, source that should control a certain target. And I want the envelope 1 to control the oscillator 1 filter cutoff by selecting it here. And you press the right mouse button to get up this menu here. And uh, the middle field will control how much uh, of the uh, how much the envelope should control the cutoff effect. And you can notice here uh, that we get a little orange uh, marking. Uh, it highlights how much we have selected uh, the modulation matrix to control the cutoff on the low pass filter. So if I bring this back a little bit. Uh, we almost hear nothing. The point with this is that I want uh, to be a kind of a dirty uh, bass, so I'm going to select uh, the overdrive of the oscillator, pick sign and use drive, just a little bit. After I've done that, I'm going to add a little bit extra depth by activating the second oscillator sign here instead and pull that down to minus 3 2. Now uh, the same effect as we had up here the analog low pass filter is going to be created. Same type of overdrive too. And let's see how much uh, we want the an envelope one to control the cutoff on the second filter instead. I'm going to deselect the free so it will start uh, at the same time uh, according to when I hit it, uh, a key on my keyboard. Yep, okay, and now you have to increase the envelope uh, to get the effect started. Since uh, I haven't actually increased the knobs anything, you will get here to hear the difference of actually modulating the filters now. I'm going to add a little bit more signal to bus 2. An easy way to boost the signal. I think I'm going to increase the modulation depth a little bit. I'm 
going to change the volume envelope. Okay, and that is uh, a nice hard bass, but uh, you can use effects to get a little bit more gritty, along with using the bass effects naturally. So firstly here, I'm going to add on bus 1 a acid low pass. I don't think uh, hyperbole is the best uh, mode on this filter. Okay, I'm quite happy with that. It will add just a little bit extra grit uh, to the sound. If we deactivate this bus, you will hear it. It's not much, but uh, I like the gritty uh, type of basses, so I'm gonna use that one. The last thing is to use the effect matrix here. Going to add effects to the final mix instead of using the bus effects, which I talked about in the previous material. Uh, sorry, the previous tutorial. So we got distortion here, and we got different types of distortion effects. We got classic, we got tube 1 and tube 2. I normally use classic, so I'm going to experiment a little bit with this. Now, uh, another thing with this bass, I don't want to be able to do chords with it because it will sound horrible, so I'm just going to allow one key at a time. Uh, so when I play this, it uh, will not uh, be, a, well, there will be no accident where I actually just press two keys and get a horrible sound that will make everybody afraid. So uh, along with this uh, change, you can also change the bus mode to mono and increase this so you only have instead of stereo depth in your signal you get on a mono one signal this is good for uh, when you want to mix uh, the bass into uh, the track later on because you only get a mono signal from uh, diversion and uh, this will make the bass sound centralized in the stereo field uh, let's see if we can add some extra uh, grit to this not gonna use any glide on this one. I think I'm fairly happy with this. I at least showed a little bit with the source uh, how much you want to affect the component that is in the second field here. Uh, you can also apply LFOs like activating it here and uh, add so this bus gets a little modulation too. And uh, you get the source from the modulation field and then you increase how much it should affect and then you find the component you want to use, in this case the bus, and the filter from bus 1. I want this to start when I hit a note. And I want this to go a little bit faster, I think. And I don't want to use a triangle shape on the LFO, I want a sign shape. Or a saw, I'm not sure yet. I think so is the best one uh, right now. Yeah, okay, uh, that was a short introduction and uh, a little bit demonstration on how you create basses, I guess, uh, along with the modulation matrix here. Uh, if you wonder uh, if the modulation matrix will uh, be enough. You have different tabs up here that makes you able to create even more modulations. So you have essentially one, two, three, 
four, five, six times four fields uh, to occupy the modulation matrix with. So yeah, you should be able to create kind of uh, complex sounds with. That was everything for this tutorial.